This is the first video in the series on using Quest Machine. This is an orientation video. We'll set up the scene in preparation for writing quests. In the next video, we'll actually write a simple quest, which will look like this. After importing Quest Machine, if you're making a 2D project in Unity 2018 or newer, you'll need to tell Quest Machine that Unity's built-in Physics 2D package is enabled. To do this, select Tools, Pixel Crushers, Common, MISC, Enable Physics 2D Support. If you're using Unity 2017 or older, you can skip this. We're going to start with a scene with no Quest Machine components in it. The scene will use some free assets from the Asset Store that are part of some great packs if you're looking for art in these styles. These assets include Toon RTS Units Orc Demo, Toon RTS Units Demo, and a piece of nature. In this scene, our player is set up with some very basic movement controls. It has a nav mesh agent and a nav mesh agent animator, which is a small custom script that just syncs the animation to the nav mesh's speed. And it has a custom click to move script called Player Night Controller. I've also imported Cinemachine to make the camera follow the player. This is what it looks like. The Quest Giver game object right now only has a transform and a rigid body connected to a model. And we also have a mysterious circle, which again is just a basic set of game objects. The first thing to do to set up the scene is to add the Quest Machine prefab, which is located in Plugins, Pixel Crushers, Quest Machine, Prefabs. You can also optionally add an Input Device Manager prefab, which handles gracefully switching between joysticks, keyboard, and mouse modes. We'll skip that for this video. The Quest Machine prefab has a canvas with several UIs that you can customize. There's a dialog UI for talking with Quest Givers, a journal UI, that shows the player's current quests, an alert UI that's used to show gameplay alerts, and an on-screen HUD for tracking quests. The Quest Machine prefab also has a Don't Destroy Game Object component, which marks it so that it won't be destroyed when switching scenes. The next step is to create a quest database. To do this, go to the Project folder and select Create, Pixel Crushers, Quest Machine, Quest Database. This is an asset in your project. You'll assign quest assets that you create to this database. But first, we'll assign this database to Quest Machine so that it knows which databases to load. Next, we'll add a Quest Journal component to the player. This records quests that the player has picked up. You can set a unique ID and the display name that's used in UIs. If the Quest Journal UI and Quest HUD UI fields are not assigned, then it will use the UIs that are found under the Quest Machine's canvas. This UI settings section simply allows you to override those settings if you want. Now inspect the Quest Giver. We're first going to add some components that will help us trigger Quest Dialog. There are many ways to trigger Quest Dialog, and we're just going to choose one that's very simple to set up for now.
add a sphere collider and tick is trigger. Then add a trigger event component. Finally, add a quest giver component. Set the quest giver's ID and display name. And then we'll take a look at dialog content next. This is optional content that's shown in dialog UIs based on the number of quests that the quest giver has to offer. For now, we'll just set the no quests UI content so that the quest giver will say hello when it doesn't have any quests to offer. And finally, at the bottom of this inspector, we can see that there's a section for the quests that the quest giver has to offer. Right now, since we haven't created any quests, the list is empty. When we do add quests to this list and the player accepts them, copies of those quests will be added to the player's quest journal. So let's make a journal button that allows the player to view his journal. We'll create a journal button and assign the onClick event to the quest journal's toggle journal UI method. And for this example, we'll position it in the upper left of the screen. This is what it looks like when you click the journal button. The last thing we need to do for the quest giver is to hook up a way to start dialog. The trigger event component has an on trigger enter event. Let's point that event to the quest giver's start dialog with player method. This method will find the game object in the scene that is tagged player and has a quest journal component. And since we haven't added any quests yet, this is what it looks like so far. To recap, we added the quest machine game object, added a quest journal to the player, added a quest giver to the quest giver NPC, and set up a way to trigger dialogue. In the next video, we'll make the quest. If you want to jump into Quest Machine faster, you can try the Quick Start tutorial instead. However, if you want to build up step by step, please continue to the next video.